Okay. Well, you gotta you're do some here. of that. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I do have the notifications on on YouTube when you post a video and I'm like, I go there. <laughs> we just need some background music. We'll add it when we post on YouTube. Well, welcome everyone. We have Austin here today for one of the workshops for Biddle Era Hackathon. And uh, it's targeting specifically the Scaffold Era track that is all inspired from Scaffold Eve of Austin. So very glad and very happy that Austin is here. Uh, thank you very much for coming and the floor is yours. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I think let's just do, let's just do a little scaffold intro and uh, kind of talk about building apps and how you could get started and tinker with Solidity. Thank you for having me and I'll uh, maybe just share my screen and we can dive in. Does that sound good? Okay, I'm going for it. Here we go. Okay, so there's a lot here, but we're 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 talking about scaffold ETH too. But I think from a higher level, we're talking about just like getting started on Ethereum, learning how to tinker, learning how to test your assumptions, and then challenging those and and getting better and growing. Uh, but but really, the starting point uh, a lot of times is just like tinkering with the syntax and understanding solidity. But uh, th this will allow you to do that in a way where you can then build a lot of things on top of that and uh, really iterate quickly. So uh, let's let's dive in. So I've got Scaffold ETH 2. I've got it here. I don't know. It's If you just Google Scaffold ETH, you'll find it. Uh, actually, if you Google Scaffold ETH, you might find Scaffold ETH 1, which would lead you here. And there's a link to Scaffold ETH 2 here. But if you Google Scaffold ETH 2, you'll find Scaffold ETH 2. OK, so let's say you've, you've found Scaffold ETH 2. Uh, you clone it down, which I've already done here, and then you CDN and you yarn install, right? And then you yarn chain. So right now we're running with hard hat, but uh, we have like a choose your own adventure CLI where you can choose between hard hat and foundry and a couple other of those kind of like 50 50 decisions right now. It's not 50 50 for some folks, but. Uh, uh, use the tool, use the tool of choice, use the tool that gets the job done. But once we have this installed, uh, we have our chain running, then we're going to do a yarn start and that's going to fire up our kind of dev front end. Okay. And then the last thing we'll do, uh, kind of just following these instructions is a yarn deploy. And that's going to deploy a kind of like a template smart contract and get something out on our local network. And it also gives us something we can tinker with uh, on local host. And this is kind of the, the drop screen. This is kind of the, the most important part of Scaffold ETH is that you'll have kind of your smart contract here and you'll have a front end over here. And this front end uh, represents your smart contract, whatever kind of, uh, you know, read and write functions you have over in your smart contract, you'll see that stuff represented here. You can see that we have this greeting building unstoppable apps and that's here, right? And if I would, you know, maybe I'll add some more exclamation points to it and then we'll yarn deploy it, right? A uh, uh, fantastic change to the smart contract. Maybe I need to make this a little bigger. But then uh, if we go look at our front end, we should see those exclamation points, right? Awesome, yeah, so that, so, so this is like the initial kind of feedback loop you want to get in. If you're a good developer, you'll pick up the syntax of Solidity very quickly. But get in here and tinker with your smart contract. And then uh, you'll be able to see the changes here in the front end and you'll be able to interact with it too. So uh, let's, let's see what we have here. We have some, you know, data types here. We have a mapping that has a counter. We have a constructor in our smart contract. We have a modifier that checks to see if it's some owner. So we track an owner and then we check to see if the owner is right there. And there's some kind of set greeting function. The, a greeter contract is always a really good hello world intro contract. Uh, basically there's a greeting and then you allow, allow people to, to change it. So let's, let's just go change the greeting uh, to hello world uh, and send. And it's gonna say, oh, you don't have any money. So what you, what you have to do is go grab some local funds from the faucet. You can click this button here, or you can even pull up the faucet here. But now we should have some funds. And if I hit send, yes, it makes a transaction and it updates our greeting to, to hello world. And there's even a total counter, right? If I say hello world two, hello world three, we see that counter incrementing. 
And there's some premium variable. Let's go look at that. So it's some bool. And uh, it looks like they're in the set greeting. We do this little logic check here. And it's saying if message.value. So we've got a payable function here. And if there's value, then we set premium to true. Kind of just some arbitrary flag. We're just playing around with variables and smart contracts and teaching you some 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 early tricks. But let's see, if, if we send some value here, like let's send 0 0.001 ether. Uh, so this is gonna fail too. It's gonna tell me something like underflow, numeric fault. Uh, this is just another one of those gotchas with ETH development that we've tried to kind of like wander you around in the right way. But it, it doesn't do floating point math. You can't have decimals going into smart contracts. So there's this kind of offset where we go from ETH to way, and you do this right here. You basically take it times uh, 10 to the 18, and uh, that makes it into a whole number where we as humans can still do things with decimals, but the smart contracts and the EVM don't have to mess around with floating point math. It's more of a simple, uh, simple EVM. So now let's hit send, and there we go. We actually paid some money and we see that now premium is true, right? The smart contract is acting like it should. It's premium is set to true. I thought it would have a balance up there. I wonder wonder why. Oh yeah, there it was. It just didn't it didn't didn't update yet. So I can say hey hey hey, and I can send in like 0.5 ETH, right? Let's send in a bunch and go. Then we should see this uh, eventually kind of update with the money in it. Yeah, there we go. So our contract is kind of accruing value. We're, we're setting some variable uh, using a payable function. We have this variable true that's that's swapping whenever we put in money. And if there's no money, I bet it goes back to false. Let's see what happens. No money. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're really kind of like playing with this contract. We're really figuring out how this all works. Uh, maybe, maybe we could look at this withdraw function next and talk about burner wallets. So see how there's this is owner, right? There's this modifier that says you have to be the owner. And if if not, it's going to revert. So only the owner can call this withdraw function. And I'm not sure if I'm the owner, but I'm going to try calling it, see what happens. So yeah, not the owner. So I'm not, let's see, who is the owner? Okay, this guy's the owner. And this is actually the uh, the faucet. So So what's happening is it's getting deployed. Let's go see. And the owner is getting updated to whoever gets passed in. So we can go look at our deploy script. And there, we're passing in the deployer. Let's just take that over, right? Let's say, let's make us the owner. So when it gets deployed next, uh, this address will be the owner. And this is going to give us the opportunity to talk about burner wallets and, and a few other things that make it really easy to test. So again, we're just deploying a whole new version of our contract. That 0.5 ETH that we had is going to be lost forever, but it's on a test net and doesn't matter. Uh, so we have a new contract here. But check this out. Now we're the owner. And that's an important uh, difference. So now someone sends in some money and they do 0.5 or something like that. And money gets locked up in here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't have enough money to do that. Okay. 0.1. <laughs> and we send it in. So now we can see that I'm down to only $700 and the smart contract is up to uh, smart contract is up to $185, right? So now we should be able to call withdraw and, and bring that 185 back to us out of the smart contract. Let's see what happens. Yep, okay, it did work. And, oops, sorry. And and there we go, we have our money back. So now we're kind of the owner of the contract. We've, we've just tweaked the contract a little bit, right? No, nothing too big yet, uh, but let me show you this. So let's say you have this only owner function and you want to test it, right? This uh, scaffold ETH makes it really easy for testing these small little things. So for instance, we want to test that the withdraw function, we want to test that a bad guy can't withdraw basically, okay? So let's uh, put some put some money in, right? And, and we'll put in like maybe 0.2 ETH and we'll send that in. Okay, so now there's money in the contract. Uh, what we want to see is that like a bad guy can't withdraw. And, and we know that like it's got this only owner modifier and it's doing this require statement here. So it really should be only the owner, but let's test it and make sure, right? So uh, what I'm gonna do is open up an incognito window. Okay, so an incognito window has different local storage and local storage is where these burner wallets are being kept. So if I go to localhost 3000, the same, the same app, uh, in local or in uh, incognito, you can see that I kind of have a different address. See how these uh, look a little different. And let me just close that and open that up again. 
should be a totally different address, right? Yep, I'm getting a new one every time. So this is super handy for making these quick tests to try things out, right? You know, we're, we're acting with this, we're interacting with the smart contract. It's kind of like a massive multiplayer game, right? Anybody can get to it in a very censorship resistant way. Uh, but let's prove that only this dude can actually withdraw the money, right? We see that there's 0.2 ETH in there. I'm gonna go grab some money from the faucet to make sure this bad guy has money. And I can even, you know, say I'm the bad guy and put even put in a little bit more money. Maybe let's put 001, right? I don't, I don't know. Just to prove that like bad guy can interact with this contract and everything works as it should. But what shouldn't work is this withdraw function, right? This should, this should only be the owner that can do this withdraw. So let's see what happens when we try to withdraw. There we go. It says not the owner, right? We get that nice revert string. And then just a triple check, let's go back over here as this guy and let's do the withdraw. And we know, notice that it happened successfully. So even though you're not like, you know, very intricately and very for sure testing things here, you're getting a quick idea of, you know, this wallet over here can't interact with it. This wallet over here can interact with it. And if you were just tinkering with a smart contract, just trying things out and you wanted to make sure this works, you'd probably go in and start writing like a pretty big test suite that says, you know, the owner can do this and the owner can't do this. But this could take you 15 or 20 minutes of writing the test. Whereas if I want to just go try this real quick and I'm still tinkering, this method of, oh, I'll just pull up an incognito window and, and try to attack it really is helpful for you testing these, just testing your assumptions almost, right? You're not testing the overall security and proving that this thing is like bulletproof. You're basically testing your own assumptions. Does this thing do what I think it does? Okay, so now let's get into some more tinkering. We barely changed our smart contract at all. Uh, if you're a developer, uh, you, you can go to Solidity by example. Again, just Google Solidity by example. You're going to land here. So many awesome things, uh, all the way down to like DeFi and hacks and different apps. But starting at the top, if you're getting into the language, this is the best way to do it. If you want to learn Solidity, there's all sorts of different you know, uh, guides out there. But I'm telling you the best possible way, if you're a good developer, is just go to Solidity by example grab some new concept like a mapping and throw it into one of these environments where you can quickly iterate, right? You can you can throw something in here, some my map, right? And you can hit deploy and you're gonna see it show up in your scaffold ETH. Boop, there's my map, right? We have this new mapping and we can go ask it like, okay, so it takes in an address and it gives us back some number, right? And that's what's happening here. It's a mapping of an address to a number and it, you know, it might be better if we called this like balances, right? That, that makes more sense. And then, so now I guess we're making a token. Maybe we would have a function to transfer, right? And I bet the AI is just gonna fill this in for me. Thank you. We have a recipient and amount. We make sure that the recipient's balance is greater than or equal to the amount. We subtract it from one and we add it to the other. And voila, you have a digital currency. Basically, this is all you need to create a digital currency, right? Like storing some mapping of addresses to balances and then having some transfer function that lets you move it around. And I guess we're going to need some kind of initial balance, right? Some total supply of this thing. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see. We want to set balances of the owner to a thousand, sure. And, and let's make it a thousand ether, right? Not a thousand way. Going back to the eth first way thing. Uh, and then we deploy, right? I think that's it. Let's see if it, it compiles and deploys. There we go. So along with this whole greeter system that's already built into this contract, we also just built in like a digital currency, right? We, we have balances and we can check people's balances. So if I check this dude's balance, he has a thousand eth. But if we check, you know, Vitalik's balance, Hopefully he has zero unless he he figured out how to to stop our smart contract. And and this is a really really cool thing about Ethereum is that if you deploy this contract correctly, not even you can stop it. Right? Even the great Vitalik can do nothing about this currency. He can he cannot change it at all except for with a hard fork to Ethereum. You know I think that's uh, the those the, the days of those are slowly slowly coming to an end. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we've got this uh, cool mapping and we're tinkering around with balances and we built a, a little token. Hopefully this is showing you that with Scaffold ETH, you can quickly tinker around with ideas, with concepts within Solidity, and you can try different things. 
and get an app kind of working. I don't, I don't think we want to make a currency here, but I think what I want to do is do something with this owner. I think I want to create, uh, okay. So let's say, let's just go, let's go ahead and redeploy our contract real quick and let's get it looking. Okay. Oh, whoops. Nope. Can't have balances anymore. What I want to do is create a function that's going to take in some address. So, so, uh, also, I should talk about inheritance before I dive too far into this. We are building our own, we are using our own ownership pattern here. See how we have this immutable owner, and then we set the owner in constructor, and then we have our own modifier. Uh, normally, you don't write your own ownership pattern into a contract. You would inherit that from Open Zeppelin. So instead of you know tracking an owner and doing all this stuff, I could just say is ownable. And then everything, and I'll add a few other things in here, but then I can remove all that other ownership stuff. But uh, for the sake of a demo, I'm going to write my own ownership pattern just to show you kind of um, how to interact with smart contracts and scaffolding and stuff. So we do track our own owner. We do set it up here. We set it a modifier, but there's no way to transfer ownership. And so let's say I have this, you know, kind of, it's kind of a greeter, um, contract kind of a vending machine right anybody anywhere can get to this greeter and they can set the greeting and money kind of accrues inside of it like a vending machine and then some owner can withdraw well what if i wanted to pass this on or or share this with someone else uh, i i kind of can't do that with this current implementation so let's say you know our users have requested the uh the ability to transfer ownership and so we're going to get in and redeploy one of these that does that, right? So we need some kind of uh, function that, um, I don't know, uh, change owner or something like that, right? And that's going to probably be uh, an only owner. Oh, wow, it didn't uh, add the uh, is owner modifier there. Okay, let's let's do that. Let's say, let's say it doesn't add that here, right? Oh, and it, we can't make this immutable either, right? Yep. Okay. Cool. So, kind of making some some changes on the fly here, uh, but now we have this change ownership function. And what's really funny is anyone can change the owner, right? Too super super insecure. But let's deploy it and play with it and prove to ourselves that this is like super insecure, right? Okay. So uh, we deploy this and we set a greeting to Hey, and this is going to be a premium greeting, right? It's going to add some money uh, in there. So now we've got this contract deployed that has money in it. Now let's let's get a bad guy. Let's get a bad guy and let's have that bad guy grab some gas from the faucet and come talk to our contract. And what does this bad guy want to do? Well, the bad guy can't withdraw right now because they're not the owner, but they certainly could call this new transfer, this new change owner function, right? And they can put in their address. Notice how Scaffolding has this nice preview. So it lets you know visually that you, you do have the right address. Let's go ahead and send, uh-oh, look who's the owner. Orange guy, orange and green guy's the owner now. He's taken over the contract. And now he can go, okay, now I want that money. Boom, he got that money. There we go. So now this guy stole the money out of the contract because our change ownership function uh, does not require anything else. What we need to do is add this modifier on there, right? We need to make sure that only the owner can change the owner, right? Only the owner can pass on ownership to this, this thing. So now let's test it. Let's see if uh, this fixes it, right? So now we should be able to deploy this contract to a public network. It shouldn't be able to get attacked or stolen. And our owner should be able to hand over ownership to another address. And, and then what I want to do is I want to build a, a little bit of UI that shows you how in React, you would go ahead and create this interface for the owner to hand over ownership. And we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, I'm going to pause also and just see if there's any questions. I think there's just a few of us on the call, so I don't know if there are any, but maybe, maybe if anybody wants to shout in or ask any questions, go ahead. And then I'll get into uh, building the front end, basically. Love the enthusiasm. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dustin. Okay. Uh, so we have our smart contract basically ready to go. We could, if if we were going to just deploy this thing and send people to Etherscan to interact with it, we could deploy this now to Mainnet and people would, would 
you know, they would have no smart, they would have no interface to interact with our contract other than Etherscan, but technically it's available for anyone. By the way, you could like just go to ABI Ninja and you could put in the contract and you could make your own little front end like we have built here for any smart contract on any network. Uh, so you could have some kind of weak uh, interface, but let's say we want to give our users a rich uh, experience and a nice UI and let them connect whatever wallet, wallet connect V2 even. Uh, so how would we go about doing that? After we've kind of tinkered around, we can now go build kind of an example UI. We can make this look a lot fancier. So uh, this is uh, a designer from Build Guild put this together, but it's basically just a nice user interface on top of this kind of greeter contract, right? We're able to say, hey, hey, and we're able to pay some money and set uh, a premium uh, greeting and we can see a counter, right? So this is what a UI might look like for your uh, your greeter. But we want, I want to build, the, oh yeah, and also we have a block explorer, shout out to port, so cool. Uh, I could like maybe like, I don't know, I've never, I've never really used this, it's so cool though. There we go, I can like filter down to mine and I can get in here and like look at this, it's so cool. Shout out, shout out to Scaffolding 2 developers for making neat new things all the time. But this page right here, we're going to hijack this page. We're going to carve out this home page and we're going to use it to make a UI that allows the admin to pass on the contract to a new admin. Okay. And that's going to give us some good React uh, uh, exposure. So uh, let's see. Um, basically, Maybe we need to, okay, so let's go to our front end, Next.js. We're going to go to pages and we're going to go to index. And here it is, I think. This is, yep, that's this stuff right here, I think. I'm just going to clear it all out though, right? Like do, 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 do. Oh, whoops. Out there. Oh, yeah. Hello. And if I hit save, do we see it over here? Nice. Okay, so now we have just like a hello going on over there. Okay. So what do we want to see first? I guess I kind of want to see maybe like the, the logged in user. Okay. And I think that comes in here and it's just, uh, I think use count maybe. Yep. And let's see what comes in there. Uh, address. Awesome. Okay. So we could probably have the, uh, and these are using Wagme hooks if you're familiar with Wagme, but there we go. Now I have my logged in user. It looks really ugly, but it's that dude right there, right? Just seeing that that, that, that works. Okay, and maybe I want to, I want to get the um, deployed contracts. So it's, I'm going to go use deployed contract info. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. I think I need to import that from scaffold ETH maybe. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Oh, it needs to take in some arguments. It needs to take in your contract is the name of our contract. And now what comes in here? Uh, we're gonna have, oh, we got Ramon, Ramon dropping in to say, what up? All right, what up Ramon? <laughs> I was saying earlier at the call, the best demo here would be if we built a paymaster that does gasless token sending within Scaffold E. I think that's coming. That's a, a challenge to all y'all builders is to start here and go build a paymaster system on era and have it all built into uh, it. It works at the protocol level, I think it does gasless. So I think that's a really exciting uh, piece there. Okay, so where are we at now? Uh, we're building a quick front end. We've already tinkered with our smart contract. Uh, it's an it's an ownable smart contract where an owner can pass on ownership. And now we're building the React front end using Wagme and Hooks and React. I've got the address of the logged in user. And here I wanna just get, uh, well, I guess this is gonna be the contract data. I don't even know what this looks like, like yet, but I bet, I bet I can do contract data dot yeah, address, right? Nice. And does that show up here? Oh yeah, it shows up down here for some reason. I, I, I don't know. Maybe if we put this in a div or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's grab, let's grab this div. You'll find in smart contract development, you spend way too much time. If you're building apps, you spend way too much time building your app and uh, less time building your smart contract, which is really sad sometimes. But if you're building smart, smart contract apps, it's just kind of a a reality of it. Okay, so we we have uh, our logged in address, we have the smart contract address, but let's look this, let's make, make this look pretty, right? Since this is using uh, scaffold ETH, you've got things like an address component. So instead of just having this address like it is here, 
what if we do something like we bring in an address component and that comes in from scaffold ETH automatically and we set the address equal to the address, right? We don't need any of this stuff. Just that right there, right? So we turned just outputting our address into an address component, right? With the address getting fed in. And let's look, oh, doesn't that look so much nicer? You get the blocky preview, you get the address. If you click the address, it's gonna take you to the block explorer of whatever network you're on and you can copy the address. Just a much better component, right? Let's see that same thing for uh, this smart contract address too. There we go. Okay, now we should, uh, that should pep up that one a little bit. There we go. So here's our logged in user. Here's our uh, contract. What if we wanna get a, maybe a balance for each one of these people too, right? Oh, did I hear someone coming in there? Nope, okay, good. So I want the address and the balance for each one of these uh, just to make it look nice. There we go. Look at that, isn't that nice? And you have this nice component that switches between ETH and USD. Right. So here's our logged in user and how much money they have. Here's our smart contract and how much money is loaded into the contract. Now, what we want to do is we want to figure out who is the owner of the contract. Right. And we want to have a kind of a third, a third thing that is not like the other two who owns the contract. Let's uh, let's do that next. Owner of the contract right? We're, that's what we want to mess around with next. Okay. And it gives us a little layer there. Okay. So to get that, we're going to have to read from our smart contract, right? Going back to the debug mode, we would go over here and we would call the owner function and get this. Uh, this is a read function here. We would get the owner back, right? So let's do that. And the way we're going to do that is with another hook use, but this one, it's going to be scaffold contract read. So this is similar to use contract read from Wagme, but it, since, it, since we have scaffold ETH and we have a lot of stuff like the network and the wallet all being handled for you, the, these hooks are even a little bit cleaner than the Wagme hooks, except for our big long scaffold name, but that's just, uh, just part of it. Okay. So use scaffold contract read actually, I think takes in an object. I think we could do some uh, uh, oh man, there we go. Yeah, it takes in an object with a contract name, a function name, and then whatever args you want. So let's go ahead and open up that. So our contract name is your contract and our function name, I believe is owner, but we need to go look at it. Uh, yeah, I think it's owner. I think we could go, we can go to the smart contract or oh, check it out, ready, tab complete. Let's see, let's see if this nice tab script or type script stuff gives us what we're looking for here. There we go. I'm able to hit control space and I get kind of, these are the items that are like actually in the smart contract and it's giving me tab completion over here in front end land in react land. It's telling me here are the functions on your smart contract. Right. And I want basically the owner, I think. Right. And then if we hit save, Oh, and there's some data coming in here. Let's see. Yep. And we're going to change that to, we're just going to call it owner, I think. Right. And now, now we're down here. Uh, now we're ready for owner. Oh man, whoa, that's cool. Uh, what do I want here? What I want to do is do another address with the owner. Oh wow, GPT or Copilot just figured that out. That was very nice. And oh, okay, it looks like we are the owner. Okay, let's go back to having uh, a weird random person as the owner and deploy it just so we can see it look like that. Uh, let's redeploy. Okay, and let's watch our app here. We should get, yep, we have a new smart contract and we have an, and the owner is this guy and this is us here. Okay, so uh, this is working. We're able to read who the owner is, but now it's time to make uh, a little uh, form with some tracked state in React. And then we'll set that, uh, we'll create a write function that lets us update, that lets us call a function on our smart contract with this new owner. Uh, we're also going to need to track some kind of new owner in an address input field. Let's, let's start with that actually. Um, so let's see, we need some state, right? Const, it looks like that, I think. And then it's like use state. I, I always forget this sort of, actually, I think we throw some quotes in there. And this is going to be a new owner, right? And set new owner. 
uh, I think there's a comma there. I don't know. I think that's how you do React, <laughs> and that's where I'm at here. So, so what we're going to need to do is set. We're going to track this new owner in some React state. And uh, we'll we'll set it when they type something in over here, and then we'll use that new owner and we'll call a a, a write function on our contract. Uh, but let's say let's say set new owner. What's that going to look like? Probably really ugly. That's okay. And uh, what we need is an address input, right? Again, Scaffoldy has a ton of really cool uh, out of the box components that are going to let you. There we go. On change set new owner. I don't know if that's going to work exactly right, but it might. And uh, let's just, yeah, let's hit save here and see what we get. Okay, wow, we get an address input. And if I type vitalik.eth in there, look at that. I get a nice ENS preview. I get his ENS name. I get the address. I get the blocky preview. Like this is just a beautiful address input component. And when you build an app, your app is going to need this beautiful address input component. So when you start with scaffold ETH, you kind of have this stuff out of the box, but also go carve this out of scaffold ETH if you want to borrow this component. It's very open source, very forkable. Uh, okay. So we can set this new owner, but I don't know if this state is tracking correctly. So to double check that the state is tracking correctly. I'm going to have an address under here that is the new owner. Oh yeah, it is. So, and if I do atg.e, yes. Okay, cool. So it is tracking correctly. Wow, that is really nice. So what I had to do is create the state and then create the address input and we're good to go. So what I need to do now is create a button, right? Class name is BTN. By the way, we're using uh, Tailwind and Daisy UI. So this this will be familiar to Tailwind folks, but you can go look up Tailwind CSS if you need some, you know, uh, pointers on what class you should use for things. Uh, yeah. So now we want to update owner, right? So so now we have kind of this really ugly UI. Yeah. Let's put a line there. I like that ASCII line. Yeah, that lets us type in some somebody's name like italic uh, dot ETH. And then what we want to do is be able to hit this update owner and have it update the owner, right? To this new owner. So here's the last little piece of of, of front end we're gonna have to build. So we'll we'll say const, and I don't even know it's gonna be a function we're gonna get back. But what I want to do is use scaffold contract right, right? It's time to go talk to the contract. It's going to have this same format of give it your contract name, give it the function you want to call. It's not transfer ownership though, right? We can get right in here and we can do that space thing and we could say change owner. Someone wrote their own ownership pattern, tisk tisk tisk, but we're doing it. And the args that we pass into our our write contract are the new owner. This looks good. Okay, so now the the function that we need from react i think is called write async it's this guy down at the bottom here write async and that's just a function that's going to come back and we'll just call that change owner right and now so we have this change owner function that we could call i don't know do we just like put it right here i think we just put it right there let's see Ooh, it didn't it didn't like that uh hmm. What if I do that? IDK, I don't know. We're gonna find out, we're gonna find out. Okay, so uh, let's go try to do it, right? Let's see, let's go try to change the owner to, oh no, we're not the owner. Okay, so we need to make us the owner and we need to redeploy first because I did that thing where I got into the deploy script. Okay, so let's deploy a fresh contract. So this should change and we should be the owner. And then let's go to see if we can set the owner to Vitalik. And if we hit update owner, whoa, transaction successful. Uh, yes, it worked. Vitalik is now the owner of our smart contract. Okay. So we were able to tinker with a smart contract, maybe get our footing, kind of test our assumptions, try things in solidity and kind of learn as we go. Then we kind of uh, established kind of, okay, we want to make this work, but we want to like pass on this new ownership. We want to add this new function. So we, we created some new solidity. We tested it out with, with not a huge, you know, uh, test bank that you should have before you go to production, but just tinkering around and trying our assumptions, we were able to test out that only the owner can withdraw the money. And this new function it is now kind of 
only the owner can call this new function and we're able to change the ownership. Uh, and then we created some front end. We actually built some stink and react that tells us, you know, who we are, who the contract is and, and who the owner is. And then lets us update the contract by, by calling this new owner. Okay. So now it's time to go public with this, right? Let's say our app is ready to go. It's taken us 45 minutes to build our, our DAP, but we're ready to ship it to production. So uh, there, there's just a couple changes you have to do. Basically, we kind of have these, I like to think of these two satellites. We have this satellite that's sort of pointing to uh, deploy our contracts and this other satellite that's sort of uh, deploying our app. And so we want to point our app at uh, a new network. So we're going to start by first deploying the contract to the new network, and then we'll deploy uh, our app to a live URL to Vercel so people can interact with it. So here we go. Um, the, to deploy to a live network, you can't just use the zero account. You have the zero account, this, this hard hat network that's full of funds. On a, on a test net or a live network, we don't have that. So we need to create a local user. So a lot of times people will just go grab a private key from somewhere and they'll copy paste it around and they'll put it in an environment file, but they'll forget to hide that environment file. We do all of that for you under, under the uh, like a tiny layer of abstraction here for Scaffold ETH. You just type yarn generate and yarn generate makes you an address in, in the form of a mnemonic and puts it in your uh, hard hat packages uh, packages hard hat environment file. And that environment file is already added to the git ignore. So there's no, you know, you'd really have to force something to accidentally expose this. And that's the point. So now we can type yarn account and it can tell us about this local deployer account that we can have. It's gonna give us a QR code to send money to it. It's gonna give us the address. Uh, and it's, I guess I have some money on Sepolia. So maybe we'll just put this on Sepolia. Uh, obviously, uh, you should be putting this out on ZK Sync since this is a ZK Sync era uh, uh, hackathon. And by the way, we just put ZK Sync era into the Punk Wallet. Uh, check out uh, ZK Sync era in punkwallet.io, built with scaffold ETH, uh, a wallet uh, built with scaffold ETH. Uh, but to, to do that, you would have to do that same thing as just put the, that new network in here. And I'm not sure we have it added in yet. I think it's like still in motion. So Sadly, this deployment is not going to go to live ZK Sync era, but it really, it really is as easy as yarn deploy dash dash network, and then whatever network you want. So I could technically do ZK Sync. I think it's going to be like that or like that. So watch for that in like literally days that will be in production. Uh, you can go use the punk wallet now to send it around, but I don't think I have the network in here. And it really is just like a network addition. It's not that hard uh, to add a custom thing, but sorry, we're going, <laughs> we're going to Sepolia and I'm not spending real money it today. It looks like it is in there. Oh, is it? I see ZK Sync, but I don't see, you see ZK Sync era? The I test net, ZK Sync. And then, oh is that yeah. It? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, oh, I don't, I don't think that's, I, th I thought ZK Sync era was like live, uh, like a live network. No, let me, let me see it what is. I have. Let me see. Like oh, Z okay. it should be, I think I saw it in the, uh, in the latest PR. I just looked at the GitHub. Okay. So maybe this is ZK Sync era, you think? That would be, on, I think that's mainnet ZK Sync. Okay. Let's, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try it. Oh, okay. Mainnet. Okay. You, you think the testnet is ZK Sync era though? Here, I'll the send testnet some. should be ZK Sync testnet. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, let's see if I have, I have era. I don't know if I have test net though. It might've been ZK sync alpha. I, I don't know. I, you know what? The point is that any of these networks, uh, these networks are built to be compatible. So you can yarn deploy dash dash network and whatever you want to put in here. And now and then you'll run into some issues with gas where Arbitrum needed a little bit more gas. Optimism needed a little bit less gas. You want to tweak that. A lot of times, if you just remove the gas completely, it will figure it out by itself. So uh, almost always when these are having gas issues, it's because you're trying to hard code something and you just need to pull it out and let the network decide and that works. Uh, but you can do anything here. We can go to mainnet if we want very easily. Oh, look, you could even hard code the gas price there. But we're going to go to Sepolia. So any any EVM compatible network you want, you can deploy to with just changing the flag here, right? All right, let's deploy this thing to Sepolia. Here it goes. 
that's all we needed. We, we, we just needed to fund that address, which I already had money in there, but you know how to send uh, ETH, I hope. And there we go. I, I guess we have to wait 15 seconds and then this should get deployed. Okay, now our, our smart contract is out on Sepolia, but we need to change that second uh, satellite. I was talking about the two different satellite dishes, right? We're still pointed at hard hat locally. So this is one of the most important scaffold ETH files. It's right here in the next JS, but you can always command P and type scaffold and you're good. Well, that wasn't what I meant. <laughs> scaffold and you can get the config file. And right here is this target network. This target network is super important. It's just saying, where do I want to point my scaffold ETH app? And it's going to track all your deployments to all the different networks. So if you deploy to mainnet, and then you go back and you work uh, on hard hat for a little bit, and then you switch it back to mainnet, it's gonna go back to your mainnet contracts. Uh, but what we want here is Sepolia, right? We just deployed to Sepolia. And you'll notice that something else happened back over here, right? It logged me out and I've got something fresh going on. Basically I changed this one uh, thing here and it's gonna change my whole app over to Sepolia. Remember when we clicked on those addresses earlier? Now when I click on this address, all the addresses in the whole thing, they go to the Sepolia block, uh, block Explorer, right? So by changing this one thing, your whole app moves from EVM, ch EVM chain to EVM chain. Uh, and there's also burner wallets. Maybe you want burner wallets to be enabled even on a public network, boom then it's done, right? I just had to change that. But let's 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 turn off the burner wallets. We saw we saw the power of the burner wallets because we were able to uh, kind of interface quickly without a bunch of pop-ups. But now that our app is out on Sepolia, it's out on a public network, we're gonna turn off burner wallets and we're gonna let you connect your MetaMask, right? And you know, it's gonna say, oh, you know, your MetaMask is on something else. It'll add the network or it'll switch whatever it needs to do. It handles all this other like network stuff and wallet connection stuff for you. So you as the developer can focus on this junk right here, right? Getting the thing built and getting the logic into the contract and getting your app talking to your contract. So here we go, I'm logged in. I wanna be Nifty Inc, I wanna be ATG.E. There we go, he is loaded. Look at that Sepolia, what is that? Ooh -wee. A lot of commas in that number. Okay, so I have uh, a bunch of Sepolia and I want, basically I want me to be the owner of this, right? So I need to redeploy already. I'm seeing a problem here. We deployed it with, uh, what did we deploy it with our burner wallet? Okay, actually I can fix this. I'm gonna say false. So then I can have the burner wallet. If I disconnect and then I connect my burner wallet again, this guy is the owner. Ooh, I need to send some Sepolia to this address. Okay, let's do it with a punk wall. Huh? Uh, let's see, let's log in as me. Let's go to Sepolia. Let's send to this guy's address uh, thousands of dollars of Sepolia. There we go. Cool. Awesome. Ship it. Okay, so now uh, our burner wallet character is going to get some Sepolia. That's going to give them enough gas so we can update the owner. I'd like to update the owner to ATG.E, right? Taking it from my burner wallet to uh, my, my a little bit colder MetaMask wallet. And if I update that, let's see if this transaction goes through. So that was that was a live public network using a burner. Notice I just clicked that button. There was no modal like, hey, you're about to spend money. Are you sure you want to? Like, I just clicked that button and it went. So this is where you have to be kind of careful with burner wallets. They're really great on local host. But as you get to these public networks where you might be spending real money, that 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 confirmation dialogue becomes much more important, right? Okay, so hopefully we can track this transaction on Sepolia. And hopefully, there we go. Uh, uh, we we hopefully update our owner. The debug page is always available here. We can see it is already updated. There we go. So now our owner is Austin Griffith Daddy. And I can go ahead and log out of that burner wallet. I'm just gonna go ahead and just turn those completely off and set it up. So now we have this nice public, uh, anybody can get to it, censorship resistant app, some, some sort of a vending machine in the sky that lets you, you know, set some greeting. And we have this beautiful UI for it, right? And we also have this new UI that we've built that's for the admin to update. You know, if I wanted to make Vitalik the, the new owner of this, I could by just hitting this button and, and sending this transaction, but I'm not going to. Okay, so we've deployed our uh, 
contract. Now we just have to deploy our app, right? This this interface is still on localhost. We need to give a URL to someone, right? And the way you do that is yarn Vercel YOLO prod. Here we go. <laughs> so uh, normally you just do yarn Vercel and it does type checking and it does a lot of other checks to make sure that everything uh, is is uh, happy and your code doesn't have any kind of, let's see if I can find, uh, I, I bet, I, I'm almost sure that I have some things. Yeah, see this stuff here? I didn't use any of these icons. So the compiler would yell at me and say, yo, you know, you've got a handful of things you're not even using in your code, you knucklehead. It looks dirty and gross. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to get out ahead of that and I just did a yarn for sale YOLO and so that should just skip all of the checks and ship our app to Vercel. Uh, this is using Next.js, obviously, uh, all the state of the art stuff, Rainbow Kit, Wallet Connect version two, uh, hooks from Wagme, TypeScript. So you, you have all that type safety. Uh, all of that kind of brings this nice package together that lets you just kind of, you know, pull up scaffolding to run a few commands, have a local tinkering environment where you can, you know, tinker with your contract, uh, test your assumptions, maybe even learn solidity if you're that new. Uh, this is really handy for that. But then you can start iterating with that debug page. You can test your assumptions. Uh, you can build out some UI. Uh, you can build out your own junky UI, of course, with, with React, kind of how I did here using those, those hooks. And then you ship your contract, right? We deployed our smart contract to a network and then you deploy your app to a live URL. And once this finishes, we'll basically have a URL that we can share that lets anybody connect their wallet and set a greeting on Sepolia. And also we have this nice admin. So if there's an administrator, they can get in and you know change this to whoever they want to, to send. Uh, let's see, send it to my punk wallet, right? They can send over the ownership with a nice, uh, beautiful UI, right? I think maybe their spacing and padding is a little wild here, but uh, mostly beautiful UI. So hopefully this gives you uh, kind of a heads up and a good start. Uh, obviously, we I would have loved to deploy this to ZK Sync era. We'll have that in Scaffold Eat soon. Uh, but yeah, here here is our app live for anybody to get to. I'll paste it into chat, but I don't know how far it could go. Here, I'll I'll, I'll make a QR code for it. Here we go. I'm going to eth.build. I'm making a QR code real quick. I do this. I do this a lot. Here we go. Uh, you can see I've already got a QR code ready to go. There we go. So if you scan uh, this QR code uh, on your phone, let's see if this works. You should be able to get the live app that we just built on mobile uh, and connect your wallet. There we go, there's the app, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and connect. Uh, I guess I'll connect my MetaMask. I could open it in a lot of different uh, apps now, right? You, you, We have this really good Wallet Connect system where you could use Wallet Connect, you could use um, uh, Rainbow, you can use any wallet really to connect to these apps. If you're building an app, and you do it for the first time, usually it only has MetaMask connections and you you exclude so many different users. Maybe someone wants to use a Gnosis safe to trigger a, a, a command in your app and they can't, right? You, you just need all of this wallet stuff and you don't realize it until after you've built the app. But I think, let's see. Let me, I think I need to sign something. Let's see, I want to connect my MetaMask. Oh, it's like not. Okay, let's try Rainbow. Oh man, maybe it's the Sepolia. It's like trying to tell me to just get a wallet. Uh, I don't know, but the app is there. I don't know what's happening on my phone, why it's not letting me connect my wallet, but the app is there. You can connect any wallet you want. Uh, here, 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 let's do it this way. Let's connect my rainbow this way. There we go. So that's like my production rainbow. Uh, connection failed. Looks like maybe somebody doesn't, maybe we don't have Wallet Connect version two built in yet, but it's coming within the day because it just broke. <laughs> okay, so hopefully this is a, a great starting for y'all. I, I would say that one other place to look is speed run Ethereum. 
uh, once you kind of have your footing and you're looking for like a set of projects to build uh, beyond just the, the, you know, tinkering and scaffold ETH, we take you through kind of, this is in scaffold ETH one, but we're converting it to scaffold ETH two, building a simple NFT, building a staking app. This, this staking app is super important. It sort of teaches you the superpower of Ethereum, right? Which is the flexibility that allows you, the builder, to write the rules you want to get an adversarial group of players to coordinate financially. Uh, or in some other way, it doesn't have to be coordinate financially, but this this is really kind of leaning into what Ethereum is good at. And since this is the ZK Sync era uh, hackathon, you're, you're also leaning into L2s and speed and compression, a lot of cool things that you could do now on these new networks that you can't do on older networks. So the 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 problem space, the solution space, I don't know what it's called. The uh, We can deploy a lot of new things that do a lot more new things, but get started like learning what these basic things were like staking apps and token vendors. And then it can get a little bit more wild and you can learn about randomness, how to build your own decks, uh, how to build a state channel, how to build a multi-sig wallet. That kind of leads to account abstraction and a lot of other things, sign messages. You learn a lot of good stuff there, SVG, NFT. And then if you go even deeper, my my DMs are open, but I have this cool Miro board. Uh, I can share it in the chat maybe. Yeah, I'm going to share this Miro board in the chat just to share it. But it's like... Uh, kind of like an ETH dev tech tree. We're working on building this in a fancier way, but it's sort of like if you're doing the speed run and you're looking for what's next after speed run Ethereum, there's a handful of things you want to go learn. Uh, in particular, like you go through the dice game, but you know, go figure out a chain link price feed, figure out how those price feeds work, figure out how VRF works, uh, build an NFT on a curve, do NFT gating, run your own node. It's, it's complicated. Uh, set up a multi-sig wallet, learn how to sign and verify messages, build an indexer. I think this is one of the starting points is like build your own CLI. I'm sure, uh, you know, a hundred people have already built their own CLI. You as a developer should build your own CLI. Uh, just a little command line interface that lets you watch the chain. What's the most recent block? How many transactions were in it? How do I, you know, give you a transaction and it spits back some information about it? How do I give you an NFT collection and it spits back my, you know, my tokens within that NFT collection? How do I build a small script that lets me like uh, swap ETH to die over a, you know, a period of time kind of programmatically? You should build your own command line to do that just because it'll be a good tool for you to have, but it'll be a good starting point for a lot of these other things like building an indexer, uh, it, which gets you into like, the mempool and figuring out a front run. And if you learn mempool and front running, you start learning about how your decentralized exchange has slippage protection. And you learn what that slippage protection is and why you need to add it, which isn't in the deck in the first place. You have to add that in uh, kind of as you get further out here. Go build a prediction market. Go build an NFT that only mints to people who provide a Merkle proof that they're in some uh, Merkle tree. Get into zero knowledge, CIRCOM starter kit stuff. Get into DAOs and learn about governors. Uh, get into scalability and learn about uh, state channels. Uh, build a simple proposal system for a DAO, right? Look at the early Moloch and how uh, the rage quit and how forkable it is. Uh, get into MEV, right? This is this is like the darker, darker area of the dark forest, but uh, learn about MEV, learn about Flashbots, Rescue, uh, take, on, take on the Ethernaut, uh, EVM from scratch is another good one. Code Arena, right? Now we have this really cool kind of like auditing ecosystem that's building up where young auditors are learning new things and also helping uh, organizations get faster, cheaper audits. And that just helps the whole space. Immunify. There's a lot of good ones in here. Uh, learn about ZK, uh, all that stuff. But yeah, hopefully that's a ton of next steps, more more than you need. But uh, hopefully we've gone through and and really kind of like showed off scaffold ETH, showed off how to iterate, showed off how you, uh, in a hackathon, you can just sit down in an hour and build something and ship it, right? It's it's with the right tools. It's about focusing on what you want to build instead of wrestling with the tools. So th thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Uh, this deserves uh, a real, like, clapping in the audience. This was great. Uh, <laughs> I am so jealous for all of the hackers who are participating because I would love to just be free in a way and then just go through all of this material forever in a way to learn everything. This is amazing. I feel like we will use this video forever and ever and ever in all of our hackathons.
and everywhere we go because <laughs> it's, right. it's 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 Thank amazing. You. Thank you so much, Austin, for coming and oh, I want one of these. Go speed I run have Ethereum. One. Yeah, that is the the staking the Ethereum staking one that is in green that runs. But yeah. Okay, uh, Dustin and Vlad, do we have any questions uh, for Austin for now, or uh, are we good? No, no questions. That was awesome. Love the uh, the passion, and enthusiasm all the way through. Yeah, it was great. Uh, I didn't expect that Scaffold Ethereum uh, two was so much better than the first version. <laughs> <laughs> the first version was built by me. That was the problem. It's too messy. And now we have good uh, good developers building the second version that's just, it's awesome. It's so easy to build right out of the box. So yeah, go experiment with Scaffold E2. Yes, 100%. Well, thank you all uh, for joining. And to you, the future listener who will be listening to this amazing content, be sure to code and test and break everything that you <laughs> that you're interested in. But yes, yeah, so happy, so much value. <laughs> it says build builds, which you can't tell because of the zoom. Yeah, yeah like <laughs> click on. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Austin. Well, have a great day and have a great time. Thank you all. See you.